Did you ever try to tell a story that was so complicated that every time you tried to start from the beginning, you had to wonder where the beginning actually was? I could start by telling you about the diary I found. It contained the innermost thoughts of a tormented 16-year-old girl. But to explain how I found that life-changing journal requires telling you about the house I purchased on Harker's Island and the wine cellar I built. And that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't fallen madly in love with my physical therapist, Amanda. And I wouldn't have met Amanda if I hadn't got blown up in Afghanistan. Well, actually, it was the FNG, the fucking new guy that tripped the wire. But still, it ended my career with the 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment, Delta, and got me medically retired from what had been my chosen lifelong profession. So I guess that's where this story starts. Back in Afghanistan, shithole of the world. Don't run away, this isn't a war story. He just happened to be a retired warrior with some very good and some very bad luck all at the same time. A million miles away and maybe three centuries back in time, I was embedded with the 75th Ranger Regiment in Afghanistan near coast in August with 100 pounds on my back and 100 degrees blasting in my face. I served in the 75th Ranger Regiment for nine years before being selected for first special forces. Delta operators simply refer to our organization as the unit and fill a variety of counterterrorism roles, all of which rely on speed, surprise, and extreme violence. Because of our specialized missions and covert activities, we're given a lot of latitude when it comes to things like weapons, uniforms, and haircuts while in the field. That's a nice way of saying we don't look like American soldiers. We look more like a bunch of terrifying, long-haired, bearded mercenaries from hell, or Afghan locals. On this particular August morning, we had started out early to take advantage of the darkness and avoid the heat. The day had gone longer than originally planned because this is the Army, and nothing ever goes according to plan. What had started out as a quick recon and raid to take out a few high-value targets had ended up being a full-scale battle against superior numbers high in the mountains. Two Delta, Delta operators and I were embedded with the company of Army Rangers. We'd come under withering fire from the mouth of the cave above us, and I had just about had enough of that. I grabbed my guys and a half dozen rangers and started heading up the steep slope toward the cave to eliminate the machine guns and RPGs. As a sergeant first class, I was in command of my three-man Delta team. Sanchez and Waters were both staff sergeants and outstanding NCOs. Sanchez served as our sniper and constantly reminded me through his shooting while, he was, while I was glad he was on our side. We led the rangers quietly and silently up the steep left flank following a goat trail weaving through the rocks, while the bulk of our ranger force kept up fire support to our right. As we picked our way through the boulders and got closer, the enemy soldiers in the cave spotted us and readjusted their fire. The trace rounds looked like spears of light coming out of the hot sun. Incoming rounds were bouncing all around us. That's when we picked up the pace. Waters, with me, Sanchez, kill that motherfucker on the PK. Cover fire. Staff Sergeant Andre Waters was bigger and faster than me. I'm no slouch but Waters should have been making 10 million a year playing in the NFL. The two of us started sprinting while Sanchez used his sniper rifle on the targets near, near the cave. The Rangers who had come up with us were laying down suppressing fire as they followed us up through the rocks. When we got close to the mouth of the cave, the goat trail ended, which meant coming forward required some trickier climbing and being exposed to enemy fire. Gary, that Staff Sergeant Gary Sanchez, continued popping off targets near the cave but that damn PK machine gun was raining down holy hell all around us. The ranger closest to me, one of the newer guys in the platoon, decided to be a hero. He ran to my right and cooked off a grenade to toss it into the cave where all that machine gun fire was coming from. Stop, I screamed. Damn, I could see the wire from 20 feet away. How the hell did he miss it? I shouted as loud as I could, and that's the last thing I remember. Sanchez told me later on as I was waiting for the PJs, that's power rescue jumpers, crazy ass Air Force medics to come and haul my bleeding ass out that the kid had tripped the wire and taken out the whole front of the cave. The Hodges hadn't thought it out so well because the detonation was so damn big it killed most all of them and the Hodges made their own bombs, improvised explosive devices, IEDs. These were full of pieces of chain link fence, scrap metal, ball bearings, spent shell casings, whatever the fuck else they could find on the ground. Good thing I had my tetanus shots. Waters caught a few scratches, but not enough to take him out of the fight. While my vest had saved my life, it didn't cover everything, and I almost had my right arm blown out of its socket. A big piece of hot metal went straight through my shoulder and removed my AC joint. This is a procedure best left to surgeons while you are under general anesthesia. 
Having it done with dirty hot metal while getting shot at is not recommended. Andre and Gary pick me up and carry me down the mountain while the last of the remaining Hodges tried to kill us. I would have done the same for them, but it didn't make me feel any better about having my guys expose themselves to save my lame ass. By the time they had me at the bottom of the mountain, I'd awakened, but I'd bled out pretty good and was wondering if I was gonna make it. Andre tore my vest off and used some equipment and the medic until the rangers came running with some pressure bandages. I was sort of in and out of consciousness, bleeding from a dozen holes in my arms, neck, and the big one in my shoulder. When the helicopter roared in with the Apache gunship escort, I saw Water's big white smile against his dark skin. Your ugly ass is gonna make it. Send me some cookies when you get back to the world. Then that big homo kissed me and told me he loved me. And because he really does love me, he shoved ice into my hand, hidden under my thigh. If my bird went down and I lived, at least I'd have ice with me. It was just a Delta mindset, never go down without a fight. That would remain with me for the rest of my life. A few BJs came running and popped a morphine syringe into me and that was that. Last thing I remember was the sound of the mountain coming apart under the fire of that Apache. I think I was smiling when I passed out.